Hello viewers, welcome to the online educational resource program of Geological Society of Assam. I am Dr. Rimjim Dutta from Pandit Dindal Upadhyay Adarsa Mahavidyalay, Dalgaon Darang. Today, I am going to discuss on the topic sequence of reactions and regulation of glycolysis. This lecture is a part of an initiative taken up by Geological Society of Assam to help the students of geology during this critical period of COVID-19 pandemic. I want to dedicate this lecture to my beloved father. Let's start our lecture. After going through this video, the students will have an idea about what is glycolysis, phases of glycolysis, stepwise explanation of glycolysis, energy yield in glycolysis, fate of pyruvate and regulation of glycolysis. Now come to the first point, what is glycolysis? Glycolysis is the sequence of 10 enzyme catalyzed reactions that convert one molecule of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid. Glucose, the final product of carbohydrate digestion, absorbed in bloodstream and the liver receives the dietary carbohydrates directly from the intestine through the portal vein. Inside the hepatocytes, glucose is phosphorylated into glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme glucokinase. This glucose 6-phosphate may undergo different metabolic pathways like glycogen synthesis, hexosamine pathway, pentose phosphate pathway, etc. In addition to this, glucose released to systemic circulation by glycogenolysis or gluconeogenesis. This glucose is released from liver by glucose transporter that is GLUT. Two, glycolysis takes place in the extra mitochondrial part or the soluble cytoplasm of the cell. In aerobic respiration or in the presence of oxygen, glucose undergo complete oxidation. Anaerobic respiration may take place either during complete absence of oxygen or in the presence of limited amount of oxygen. During complete absence of oxygen, incomplete oxidation of glucose occur, which results formation of carbon dioxide and ethyl alcohol, which is the primary means of energy production in the organisms like bacteria, fungi, etc. When there is limited amount of oxygen, glucose undergo conversion into lactate which is effective during short and intense exercise and can provide energy for that period. Glycolysis is also known as EMP or Emden Meyerhoff Parnas pathway which is in honor of these pioneer workers in this field. Free energy released during the process of glycolysis is conserved in ATP and NADH. This glycolytic breakdown of glucose is the sole source of metabolic energy in some mammalian tissues and cell types like erythrocytes, renal medulla, brain and sperm. In glycolysis, there are two phases through which one molecule of 6-carbon glucose converted into two molecules of 3-carbon pyruvic acid, that is phase 1 or preparatory phase and phase 2 or payoff phase. The preparatory phase or phase 1 consists of the first five steps of glycolysis. In these reactions, glucose is enzymatically phosphorylated by ATP 
to yield fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. This phosphorylation first occur at carbon 6 and then at carbon 1. This fructose 1,6 bisphosphate then split into two molecules of glyceraldehyde triphosphate. Here, two ATP molecules are required to activate the glucose and to prepare it for the cleavage. The last five reactions of glycolysis constitute this pay of phage or phage 2. Here, energy liberated during conversion of two molecules of glyceraldehyde triphosphate into two molecules of pyruvic acid is converted by the coupled phosphorylation of four molecules of ADP to ATP. Although four molecules of ATP are formed in phage 2, but the net overall yield is only two molecules of ATP since two molecules of ATP are already invested in phage 1. Here, energy is also conserved in formation of two molecules of electron carrier NADH per molecule of glucose. Now, I am going to explain glycolysis in a stepwise manner. Step 1. Phosphorylation of glucose. In this reaction, glucose is activated for subsequent reactions by its phosphorylation at carbon 6 and results formation of glucose 6-phosphate. Here, ATP molecule act as phosphoryl donor. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase in skeletal muscle and in hepatocytes, this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme glucokinase. The value of standard free energy change is minus 16.7 kJ per mole. Like many other kinases, hexokinase requires magnesium ion for its activity because the true substrate for this enzyme is magnesium ATP complex instead of ATP for negative. This magnesium ion shield the negative charges of the phosphoryl groups in ATP and making the terminal phosphorus atom to become an easier target for the nucleophilic attack by hydroxyl group of the glucose. Step 2. Conversion of glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate is an aldose and fructose 6-phosphate is a ketose. This reversible isomerization of an aldose that is glucose 6-phosphate into ketose that is fructose 6-phosphate is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerage or phosphohexose isomerage, which require a magnesium ion. The value of the standard free energy change is 1.7 kJ per mole. This mechanism involves an enidial intermediate. Step 3. Phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. In this reaction, one phosphoryl group is transferred from ATP to fructose 6-phosphate and results formation of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1. The phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme is so called because there is an another enzyme which is known as phosphofructokinase 2 which catalyzes the formation of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate from fructose 6-phosphate. This reaction is essentially irreversible and the first committed or rate-limiting step of the glycolysis. The value of the standard free energy change is minus 14.2 kJ per mole. Step 4. Cleavage of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The enzyme aldolase catalyzes 
this cleavage and results formation of two triose phosphates. They are glyceraldehyde three phosphate, which is an aldose, and another one is a ketose, that is dihydroxy aceton phosphate. In this reaction, cleavage occur in between carbon three and carbon four. Here, the value of the standard free energy change is 23.8 kilojoule per mole. Thus, this is a reversible aldol condensation type of reaction. Step 5. Isomerization of dihydroxy aceton phosphate. Unlike glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, dihydroxy aceton phosphate cannot be directly degraded in the subsequent steps of glycolysis. So, it is converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. This conversion is catalyzed by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. For this reaction, the value of the standard free energy change is 7.5 kJ per mole. This ketose aldose conversion reaction involves acid base catalysis. This mechanism is quite similar to the reaction that is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase. Now, the carbon atoms which were derived from the positions 1, 2, 3 of the starting glucose now become chemically indistinguishable from the positions 6, 5 and 4. Step 6. Oxidative Phosphorylation of Glyceraldehyde 3 Phosphate This is the first of the pay of page and first of the two energy conserving reactions of glycolysis. In this reaction, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and this conversion is catalyzed by the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, which is dependent on NAD+. In this complex and reversible reaction, the aldehyde group of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is dehydrogenated to a carboxylic anhydride with phosphoric acid, which is an acyl phosphate and has a very high standard free energy of hydrolysis and conserves much of the free energy, which is liberated during oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. The value of the standard free energy change is 6.3 kJ per mole. Step 7. Transfer of phosphate from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ADP. This is the first ATP generating reaction in glycolysis. Here, a high energy phosphate group is transferred from carboxylic group of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ADP by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. This is a reversible reaction and the value of standard free energy change is minus 18.5 kJ per mole. Energy released on oxidation of an aldehyde to a carboxylate group is conserved by the coupled formation of ATP from ADP and for inorganic phosphate. The formation of ATP by phosphoryl group transfer from a substrate. Here, the substrate is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is referred to as a substrate level phosphorylation. Step 8. Conversion of 3-phosphoglycerate to 2-phosphoglycerate. This reaction involves a reversible shift of phosphoryl group between carbon 2 and carbon 3 of glycerate. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutage. Here, a magnesium ion is essential for this reaction and is a reversible reaction. The value of the standard free energy change is 4.4 kJ per mole.
step 9 dehydration of 2 phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate this is the second reaction where a high energy phosphate compound is formed this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme enolase which promote the reversible removal of a molecule of water from 2 phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate this mechanism involves an enolate intermediate which is stabilized by magnesium ion. For this reaction, the value of standard free energy change is 7.5 kJ per mole. Step 10. Transfer of phosphoryl group from phosphoenol pyruvate to ADP. This is the last step of glycolysis where a phosphoryl group is transferred from phosphoenol pyruvate to ADP. Here, a phosphoryl group is transferred from a substrate. Here, the substrate is phosphoenol pyruvate. Therefore, this reaction is also considered to be a substrate level phosphorylation and is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. The value of the standard free energy change is minus 31.4 kJ per mole. Now, I am going to discuss about energy yield in glycolysis. Here, the total number of ATP consumed or gained are shown in this table. In step 1, that is, in the phosphorylation of glucose, one ATP is consumed. In step 3, that is, the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate, one ATP is consumed. In step 7, transfer of phosphate from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ADP, there are 2 ATP are gained. And in step 10, or in the last reaction of glycolysis, that is, the transfer of phosphoryl group from phosphoenol pyruvate to ADP, there are 2 ATP molecules are gained. Therefore, the net gain of ATP will be 2. Now, I am going to discuss about fats of pyruvate. There are three fats of pyruvate produced by glycolysis. When limited amount of oxygen is available, pyruvate is reduced to lactate through lactic acid fermentation. In aerobic oxidation, pyruvate is oxidized to acetyl-CoA which is then enter into the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. The third one is conversion of pyruvate to ethanol and carbon dioxide. In complete absence of oxygen, pyruvate undergo conversion into ethanol through alcoholic fermentation. Now, let me explain these three roots of pyruvate. There are three important roads taken by pyruvate after glycolysis, depending on organism and metabolic conditions. In aerobic organisms or tissues, pyruvate is oxidized with loss of its carboxyl group as carbon dioxide and results formation of acetyl group of acetyl coenzyme A, which is then completely oxidized to carbon dioxide and water through Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. The second road for, for pyruvate is its reduction to lactate through lactic acid fermentation. When there is vigorous contraction of skeletal muscle under low oxygen conditions, NADH cannot be re-oxidized to NAD+. But NAD is required as an electron acceptor for the further oxidation of pyruvate. Under such circumstances, pyruvate reduced to lactate and then accept electrons from NADH and regeneration of NAD plus ochre, which is now necessary for continuation of glycolysis. There are some certain tissues and cell types like retina, erythrocytes, can convert glucose to lactate even under aerobic conditions. And this lactate is also the product of glycolysis under anaerobic conditions in some microorganisms. 
the third major route of pyruvate catabolism leads to ethanol. In some plant tissues and in certain invertebrates, protists and microorganisms such as Baker cysts, river cysts, pyruvate is converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide through the ethanol fermentation. Now, I am going to discuss about the process of regulation of glycolysis. The regulatory enzymes of glycolysis are hexokinase and glucokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase, which regulate the three irreversible reactions of glycolysis. Number one, hexokinase. The enzyme hexokinase is the first enzyme of the glycolysis, which is inhibited by the product glucose 6-phosphate, either by competition of the active site or by allosteric interaction at a separate enzyme site. Glucokinase. Glucokinase is also known as hexokinase 4, which is an isoform of hexokinase found in liver but is not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. It has a higher Km value than hexokinase and is subject to inhibition by glucokinase regulatory protein. Phosphofructokinase 1 is the most important regulatory enzyme in glycolysis. It is regulated by different allosteric effectors. The allosteric inhibitors are ATP, citrate, hydrogen ion. Physiologic concentration of ATP in resting muscles inhibit phosphofructokinase 1 allosterically and reduce its substrate affinity for fructose 6-phosphate. Citrate. Citrate is a tricarboxylic acid cycle intermediate which acts allosterically and augments the negative allosteric effects of ATP on phosphofructokinase 1. The allosteric activators are fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, ADP, AMP, and inorganic phosphate. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate allosterically increases the substrate affinity of phosphofructokinase 1 for fructose 6-phosphate and decreases the affinity to allosteric inhibitors like ATP, citrate, etc. The bifunctional enzyme phosphofructokinase 2 and fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is required for synthesis and degradation of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is controlled by covalent modification, which is regulated by cyclic AMP. The enzyme is so-called bifunctional because phosphofructokinase 2 and fructose 2,6-bisphosphate are two separate enzymatic activities of a single bifunctional protein. Xylulose 5-phosphate. The xylulose 5-phosphate also activate phosphofructokinase 2 and inhibit fructose 2,6-bisphosphate by activating phosphoprotein phosphatase and thus it increases rate of glycolysis. The activity of phosphofructokinase is also controlled by two hormones, glucagon and insulin. At low blood sugar level, glucagon trigger a cyclic AMP cascade which leads to phosphorylation of the bifunctional enzyme. This covalent modification activates fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and inhibit phosphofructokinase 2 and thus inhibit the rate of glycolysis. At high blood sugar level, insulin activates phosphoprotein phosphatase, which dephosphorylates the bifunctional enzyme and activates phosphofructokinase 2 and inhibit fructose 2,6-bisphosphatase and thus it enhances the rate of glycolysis.
Regulation of Pyruvate Kinase Pyruvate kinase activity is most broadly regulated by allosteric inhibitor, allosteric activator, and hormonal control. Pyruvate kinase is allosterically inhibited by ATP, acetyl coenzyme A, long chain fatty acids, and alanine. Allosteric activator fructose 16 bisphosphate. Fructose 16 bisphosphate binds to the allosteric binding site of pyruvate kinase and causes activation of protein kinase activity by changing its configuration. Pyruvate kinase is active in dephosphorylated state and inactive in phosphorylated state. Inactivation of pyruvate kinase is brought about by CAMP dependent protein kinase, that is protein kinase A. The activity of pyruvate kinase is also controlled by hormones, glucagon and insulin. Glucagon inhibit hepatic glycolysis by inactivating pyruvate kinase, which is brought about by cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase. But in muscle, pyruvate kinase enzyme remain unaffected by such phosphorylation. Insulin hormone increases phosphoprotein phosphatase activity which dephosphorylate hepatic pyruvate kinase and enhances activity and thus it enhances rate of glycolysis. These are the references which I have followed for preparation of this presentation. For any query and feedback, you may contact in my mail. Thank you.